Hello there. So we're back with the Invincible Oregon podcast, and this specific conversation it was kind of spurred on or reminded by um, a response to one of our newsletters recently. We were talking about pelvic congestion syndrome, and someone responded and was like, I'm not a female. This has nothing to do with me. And so it was just kind of that reminder of just increasing that awareness that uh, men, no matter what gender you are, um, you ha everyone has a pelvic floor. And so when we look at this is the pelvis here, we can all benefit from having some sort of work addressed in this area. So I'm excited to chat today a little bit more about male pelvic health. So basically, if you don't have a uterus and uh, you have a prostate, and it's, it's really cool to be able to help this area because when we look at, um, if you're watching the video, you'll see this uh, pelvis that I'm holding, but if we look at our pelvis, and the pelvic floor is basically the space between our sit bones. So this is actually a, um, the bottom is going to be a, a female pelvis here. So you can see the vaginal opening. So for the male pelvis, this area is not here. This is where the scrotum and the penis are. But when we look at this area, there's so many muscles and surrounding nerves. And when we look at the inside here, we have the same thing. So lots of muscles, we have the bladder here, the rectum, and then the prostate sits back here uh, towards the urethra. Um, so that bottom part of the bladder, the tube that goes down the uh, shaft of the penis. So the prostate sits down there and has um, a connection to the tissue between um, surrounding the rectum. So when we if we're you know if you kind of take note of where your pelvis is right now with with um, whatever surface you're sitting on because of gravity this area of our body um, has the potential to receive a ton of strain throughout our life so gravity is pushing down and then if we add any type of trauma hit to the area surgery um, different postural positions if we're if we tend to kind of lean with our pelvis forward, lean one to one side, it's a, um, let's call it an improper distribution of forces. So because of where the prostate sits, um, basically if you find your, your pelvic bones that you're, um, you're sitting on your sit bones, you've got your pelvic bones, which a lot of times if you wrap around your waist and kind of drop down, a lot of times we call that our hips, but that's actually your pelvis. And if you drop down to the front, that's your pubic bone. So the prostate sits essentially right behind that area. And so you can imagine over, over time, if that area is getting added pressure, let's say because you stand with your hips leaning forward, maybe your glutes are, are not active and you're just kind of, it's kind of this lazy posture that we can adapt to try to save energy. But that just adds a lot of different uh, a lot of additional forces to that area. And so when we look at male pelvic health, a lot of it is definitely just body awareness. Um, so just posture, movement, squatting, all of that stuff, even sitting in a slouch position adds pressures that the pelvis and the pelvic organs were not designed to withstand. Um, but then when we look at the manual therapy piece of it, so looking at the, at the visceral manipulation piece, we can access um, some really cool areas by even not doing internal work just to be able to offload the prostate. So holding up the pelvis here again, we've got the bladder here. So with the prostate being down here um, in this open space between the bladder and the rectum, Oh, the rectum's falling out. <laughs> Excuse me. There we go. Um, so there is a tissue called the central tendon. And so again, this is vaginal opening, but that's not there for the, um, the male pelvis. But this central tendon is essentially a layer of tissue, muscle, fascia 
that sits between our sit bones. So again, if you're sitting down right now, you can feel that space between the sit bones. It sits in front of the rectal opening here. And so we can actually engage with this tissue here to offload any added strain or pressure that might be happening from, um, might be um, being added to the prostate. And so compression on any organ is going to potentially disrupt the, the movement, the mobility, the motility, that innate rhythm that uh, creates physiologic function going to alter nerve function around the area, blood vessels. And so if we can take that central tendon and offload the tissues around the bladder, the prostate, the rectum, that's just going to help a ton when we look at future issues like uh, prostatitis. So just general inflammation of the prostate, which I don't have the exact numbers on, but I think most men just kind of expect to have something like that. Um, as they get older. So what if we can um, offload the prostate and help reduce that inflammation? Um, huge, huge opportunity just to be able to help the body. Um, so what could add pressure to that central tendon is um, the falls to the tailbone that we've talked about quite a bit in the past, fall to the pelvis. Um, it can also happen by chronic constipation and so or irritation of the bowels so when we bring this pelvis back up here and see where the prostate sits back here if this rectum here is getting irritated from um, bowels not moving well maybe it's just inflamed from our nutrition or diet or a disease process that is going to add to that potential compression around the prostate so not only is it um, postural and trauma to the outside of the body, but if there's an internal inflammation, that's a, a common one that we'll see is maybe they've just, you know, always had to push to have a bowel movement. That's another, another pressure that happens to the prostate. And so if we, um, part of it is definitely getting, getting the rectum to work to move as well. Um, so when we work prostate, we can work through this central tendon between the sit bones. And then if you also go to your pubic bones, we can work around this area to get directly to the prostate as well. Um, so working those areas, another, uh, another common thing that we will see as far as what adds tension to the prostate is um, a lot of bike sitting, <laughs> for lack of better term. So there's just a lot of compression to the pelvic floor if you're an athlete that sits on a bike all the time. And so whether it's just the constant pressure down, maybe it's um, not the best seat for you, or if you're going over bumps and you're constantly jamming down into that uh, scrotum, um, the shaft of your penis, that area, that can also cause added, you know, constant pressure up um, through the pelvic floor. It kind of makes me think of, um, I grew up playing soccer and concussions are definitely something we want to try to avoid, but you're, when you're heading the ball, it's like these little micro concussions and research started to come out um, about th that, that like low level impact to the head could be um, just another detrimental thing, just like a concussion, not exactly the same, but we have to look at these repetitive micro impacts that might be affecting the brain with that. And so when you think of it and your pelvic floor is maybe hitting the, the bike seat, it might seem like, oh, that's not, um, maybe not a problem, but over time it might just be storing layers of tension in that area just because there's been so many forces in there. Um, and what's interesting with that is thinking of that bike seat adding pressure to the pelvic floor. A lot of, I was just talking to another um, male patient about this recently who has had um, pain with orgasm, uh, difficulty with erection, a lot of like compromised blood flow in this area. And 
because he is mentally trying to protect that area, every time he goes over a bump when he's on his bike, he squeezes his pelvic floor and his glutes. And so it's kind of like a catch-22, right? You, yes, you are protecting the, the scrotum and the shaft of your penis potentially by changing that position, but you're also creating this tension pattern where he might be constantly tensing that area. And so a lot of times when we work with our um, bike athletes, it's education on how to actually relax the pelvic floor and notice if that is just kind of a tension response in your body because it might just be something that you've you're so used to doing to kind of protect that area so um biking's a big one another um thing that we'll see that's very interesting is with the um with the pathway so we've got bladder that sits right in front of the the pubic bone and then the urethra coming down into the shaft of the penis it can this can happen in females as well but the the urethra can actually um receive impact that causes forces as well that causes tension excuse me and so uh one of the things one of the questions we'll ask patients is when you pee, do you notice that your stream goes off one side or the other? And um, it's really funny because this is kind of like the the question that we ask patients if they, if you, have you ever hit your head? Some people are like, oh yeah, all the time. And then other times people just laugh. So some people have totally noticed that their stream goes one direction or the other. And others are like laughing hysterically because they're like, I've never paid attention to that. So if you haven't checked that out, uh check it out see if your if your urine stream goes one direction because you may have had some sort of force at some point that caused pull the bladder out here so obviously the i need my pipe cleaner the urethra comes out longer but this is the bladder this is urethra so if i had some sort of impact to this pelvic floor pelvis area that maybe caused the urethra urethral tube to maybe twist so maybe your stream isn't able to be as uh, fluid as we would want it to or it's even being shifted to one side and so the urine's being directed so it's um maybe it's not a functional um limitation for you because you're still emptying but it's a sign that for us that there might be tension in that area that we need to release and potentially help um, improve bladder emptying, reduce frequency of UTI. Um, a lot of times with the, uh, with the shaft of the penis, there's, there um, oftentimes is impact to that area. And so a lot of men will actually have scar tissue within the shaft of the penis. And also um, they can get scar tissue along that urethral tube, which you can imagine is not ideal, um, but just may, maybe being kicked in that area or again from from the bike seat that impact and so if we can help open up that pathway and release tension around that area it's i mean it's really awesome just to be able to open up that that area and offload any discomfort that might be happening from there and as you can imagine uh just sexual arousal being able to get good blood flow to that area um, and then sensation because all of the nerves that when there's impact to that area that um, get compressed and maybe you lose sensation and feeling in that in that spot so um, if you haven't yet checked out check out your urine pathway um, and if it is one side or the other you should seek someone like uh, someone that does the visceral manipulation work that we do it's pretty Pretty awesome stuff. Um, and then we've talked about this a little bit, maybe more in our social media, but just the ability to work blood flow to this area. And so when we look at where the blood flow comes down in the pelvis here, we can feel 
um, from different pulse points, uh, one in the hip crease and then one down in the ankle. Is there a difference in strength or quality of pulse side to side? And that gives us even more information to come up and check the pulses in and near the pelvic organs because if a blood vessel is getting compressed or twisted to the prostate or um, any of the organs down the bladder or the rectum, uh, we're going to get a similar dysfunction, whether it's uh, bladder function, um, sexual function, even just the ability to have a healthy bowel movement or um, have good motility in that area it requires that blood flow piece. And so that is another thing with male pelvic, pelvic health that we will address and be able to, you know, maybe the maybe the prostate's moving really, really well, but at the end of the session, but when they come back a month or two later, that prostate function has reduced again. And so it's kind of like, okay, what else, what deeper issue do we still need to release? And it might be taking that, um, engaging with the tissue of the prostate and then following the, the surrounding blood vessels. So what direction can we guide the prostate into that is going to open up blood flow and help this area um, continue to maintain that that mobility, that good rhythm that we want. So um, let's see, any other, I can't think of any other major, um, another one that we do deal with, with um, male pelvic health is swollen testicles. Um, it's kind of wild. Obviously, I don't have a testicle, so I don't know what this is like, but it sounds like the, the general thing when you go to your primary care, if you have a swollen testicle, is it's just normal, like the normal thing, you're fine. Uh, maybe they clear you for anything major, but um, to us, it means there's potentially a compromised blood vessel in that area. And so it's really interesting when we, because a lot of men won't necessarily bring up the swollen testicle because again, they've you know, learned that it's kind of a normal thing. Um, but as you can imagine, pretty darn uncomfortable. That's what I have learned. But a lot of times it's paired with that same side hip mobility restriction. So working, spending a lot of years in the CrossFit world, um, maybe that's the hip that is constantly pinching in the bottom of the squat or they're doing a ton of mobility and it's just, it's not opening up. And so it, it just kind of ties back to, okay, now we ask the question, do you also have any like swelling in your testicles? Um, and they'll be like, oh yeah, all the time on that same side. And so we're always, we're always treating where the body guides us to, but that just gives us another data point of, okay, we're going to, definitely check the, the blood flow in that area and then see how can we maybe reprogram that hip motor control during a squat that's probably been um, tight for some time. And then also, if we think of, you know, someone like a CrossFit athlete who's using a ton of muscles every time we do a strength exercise, we make little tears in our muscle tissue and it needs to heal to be able to get stronger. Um, but if we don't have good blood flow to that area, it might, this athlete might not be recovering very quickly. And um, so it opening blood flow to that area might help their body in general recover quickly and get stronger in that area. So win-win all over the place. Um, fertility is another big one if we're not getting good blood flow to that area. Um, and then, oh, the, like a sports hernia. So sports hernia tends to be um, kind of in this, like a, it's the called the inguinal canal. It's where um, the spermatic cord, the um, femoral artery, femoral nerve run through. And a lot of times we will have this um, herniation of the tissue through that canal, which is um, 
made up of a lot of fascial tissue around the abdominal muscles. And a lot of times the only uh, help for that, they'll, they'll recommend PT for core exercises and hip mobility and stuff like that. But if there's added tension, let's say from the uh, small intestines, maybe they've had chronic gut issues and it's that pressure that's actually causing the, the herniated tissue through that inguinal canal area. If you go in and surgically put a, like a mesh to protect that area, that mesh, the pressure's got to, the excess pressure's got to go somewhere else too. So maybe they'll get a hernia on the other side or lower back pain because everything's being then pushed back. So we deal with a lot of just assessing, asking about hernia history. Um, if you've had a mesh put in, we can still support you around that tissue. Um, but that's just another common area that we want to assess when it comes to male, male pelvic health. So I think that's a good initial kind of rundown to that area. Again, we all have pelvic floors. Um, I think a lot of times people think of pelvic floor and they think pregnancy and internal vaginal work. Um, obviously with uh, men, if, if you don't have a vaginal canal, the internal work is not going to be done through that pathway. There are amazing pelvic floor PTs that are trained in the, uh, the rectal work, which can be very powerful. We don't um, currently do the internal work, but there's lots of really cool ways um, to even, that even just reminds me. So even working the rectal opening here. So we, we talked about the central tendon tissue that's between the sit bones. Um, and then we've got the rectum when you head back towards your tailbone. There's a bunch of other muscle tissue and ligaments that go between the rectum and the tailbone. And so being able to, to offload that area without going internal, lots of good stuff. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful and kind of spread the word. Everyone has a pelvic floor. Um, there's stuff we can do to offload your prostate as you're getting older. Um, gosh, especially if you have, um, if your bladder's waking you up in the middle of the night. Again, that's another thing that we, um, that a lot of men will kind of accept as they get older is just normal. But what if we can prolong that, um, that period, that age that you start waking up in the middle of the night because you have to pee and then you stop drinking water before you go to bed and then you're more dehydrated. And anyways, I can keep going on. Hope that was helpful and we will see you next time.